Hello everyone. Our topic today is test taking. In addition, since this is the last of our six week sessions, I wanted to review what we've done and also talk about why mindful parenting is so important for you and your families. In our last session on emotions, we listened to some words and noticed how each of them made us feel. In a classroom test setting or any time we're evaluated, we have emotional reactions to what we hear, such as this is a test, or what we feel in anticipation of a stress-inducing experience. So let's begin today with a guided meditation specifically used by teachers before giving a test. So we'll get in our mindful bodies, feet grounded, back in an upright posture on our chair, our hands quiet, and our eyes closed. are about to take a test. Notice how that makes you feel. In your mindful posture and with your eyes closed, imagine you are taking that test now. You are answering questions easily. Then you come to a question that is really hard. You know you learned it, but you can't remember it now. Notice how you start to feel. It's a hard question, and you will think you will not be able to answer it. Without mindfulness, you might feel discouraged for the rest of the test. But imagine reaching a hard problem, and instead of getting frustrated, you remember to be mindful. Imagine putting your pencil down, closing your eyes, and taking a few deep breaths. Do this until you feel calm. Now imagine finishing your test with ease, feeling calm and satisfied. Try to remember to practice mindfulness before and during any test or quiz. There are some ways to help your child <clears throat> with difficulties in anticipating tests or other anxiety producing situations. First and foremost, use the mindfulness strategies and techniques that you have learned. The calming influence gained by the meditation we just did can instill confidence, help purge negative thoughts, and create an opportunity for the focus necessary to be successful. Often we can add visualization and imagery to the mix as another way to ease the stress as children study and review in preparation for a test. And finally, remind your child that no matter what happens with a test, he or she is a wonderful and worthwhile individual who you cherish and love. Now, in reviewing the topics and concepts we've covered, we've seen that heartfulness, gratitude, emotions, and listening are all woven into the fabric of who we are and how we experience our lives. The practice of mindfulness puts a microscope on these things, and we can add others such as mindful eating, walking, empathy, and the deeper aspects and components of communication. Mindful parenting can be achieved through the simple techniques and activities that we have shared in the sessions, and practicing compassion and patience with our child. Also, but by providing love in the form of words and actions, helping our child see that they are not alone, and being the first to admit to your child when you have not acted in a mindful manner. It is difficult to be mindful all of the time. Let your child see this in you, and let them see what you do to make it better and bring about calm and mindfulness in yourself. You and your child are in this together for life. You can help each other grow, 
learn, and thrive through mindfulness. John kabat tells us that this vocation of parenting, for which there is no manual or online site to go to to tell us how to do it, involves keeping in mind what is truly important as we go about the activities of daily living with our children. As we grow in our practice, mindful parenting means seeing if we can remember to bring attention, wisdom, and openness to all moments with our children. We hope that you have seen that mindfulness is a true practice and carries with it profound benefits for both children and parents. Thank you, and if you want to learn more about mindfulness, please visit our website.